what's up lads and today we'll be doing something different as i'll be reviewing the royal clutch rk918 i know that this channel is a gaming channel with mostly tf2 content but i really want to review this keyboard considering that there's not a lot of it in youtube plus i'm pretty sure there's only like five of you who watch my videos anyways so yeah and plus it's my channel just think of it as a uh, homogeneo type of thing where he does keyboard and tf2 videos or at least used to make tf2 videos i'll also leave a link to tech source video down below just in case you guys want to hear more about the keyboard the keyboard is around 43 dollars in the us it comes in a box which has black foam on the side to protect the keyboard a keycap puller cable management strap and this plug thingy i don't know what it's called so yeah of course, the most fascinating thing about this keyboard is the amazing RGB it has on the sides and on the back. 60% of the case is made of this see-through plastic for the RGB to pass through. And the top of the keyboard is made out of an aluminum plate. The keyboard is ascending by default with 4 rubber feet on the corners, although there is still foldable feet, which also has rubber on the end of it, in case you want it to be slightly higher. The wire is located in the middle of the keyboard and is slightly recessed so you can pull it straight down if you want to drill a hole and hide the wire. The keycaps can be easily replaced with the keycap puller although from my experience you can just easily remove them using your hands as long as you start from the sides. Unfortunately the switches are not hot swappable and are soldered to the PCB so modding this keyboard can be very hard. I'll actually be replacing the keycaps and try to lube the switches without soldering it in an upcoming video. The keyboard comes in a black or white variant and initially I thought they were using Audimo switches but apparently they were using their own brand called RK switches which comes in red, brown, blue or black. Although from what I've seen, only blue switches are available for the white variant. The switches sound decent overall although they can still be improved. The same goes with the stabilizers. They sound way better than I was expecting although they can still be improved especially the right side of the spacebar. Like I said, they're decent but not the best and I am planning to lube these and replace the keycaps so stay tuned for that. The keycaps on the black variant is darker than most keycaps that I've seen as it has a more charcoal look to it. In fact, the texture slightly feels like charcoal, having very wonderful grip on your fingers. The keycaps are double shot injection so the legends won't fade but they are made out of ABS plastic so expect body oil to stick on those keycaps like on laptops. The font on these are pretty meh personally. They're not too gamery which is good but they're also very weird with these holes. So the G actually looks the same as the 6 and the 9. The fonts are also north facing to keep the RGB shine through effectively as the RGB on the switches are also north facing. The keys are also quite high so using the keyboard for the first few times was quite uncomfortable but I got used to it as time went by. There is noticeable flex on the keyboard especially when the adjustable feet are out. Despite this, the keyboard is actually pretty tough. So yeah, no visible cracks. Oh my god, it's all red. It's a 100% keyboard with 4 additional multimedia keys on the upper right hand corner to get the minimalistic and borderless look of the keyboard, which I really like. The four additional buttons are volume adjustments, mute, and opening the calculator. There are also shortcuts you can use using the F1 to 12 buttons, although personally I don't use them at all. All the keys are anti-ghosting, meaning that all keys will register when you press them simultaneously. So feel free to bongo cat the keyboard when you range in a game. <laughs> There are more or less 18 RGB modes which can be further modified with the software which I'll talk about later. The RGB can be cycled using FN Delete which cycles through 11 backlight modes, FN plus Insert cycles through 5 interactive modes, 
fn home for breathing mode fn end for custom presets fn page up for cycling the colors fn page down for cycling through the side lamp mode and fn pause which changes the direction of the side lamp animation holding fn and pressing left or right arrow key changes the speed of the backlight animation with arrows up and down changing the brightness same goes with the side lamp with fn 2 and 5 on the numpad for the brightness and fn 1 and 3 for the animation speed You can also customize each key to have a specific color by pressing FN plus backspace. Although this is easier to do with the software which I will link down below because it is somewhat hard to find. You can change the colors of each key by going to the lighting tab. Pressing the drop down menu and going all the way to user define. Like I said you can change the color of each key but some of the colors are not that accurate. You can also mess around with the lighting tab as there are more RGB modes, functions, and customizations there such as changing the direction of the backlight RGB. The software also allows you to change the function of each key in the customize tab which is quite useful I have to say. The options are as follows, keyboard for you to change the bind of a specific key, mouse function which gives your keyboard the ability to use mouse functions such as left click and scroll. Macro button allows you to put a macro function on the key like multiple clicks in one press. Combo key allows you to register up to three different key inputs in one key. Run program opens a specific program in your computer. Multimedia for music buttons such as play, stop, volume. Windows hotkey for various Windows shortcuts such as Alt Tab. And Forbidden which basically just removes the function of that key. There's also a gaming mode tab which basically just gives you the option to disable a few keys such as the Windows button, Alt F4 and Alt Tab. You can also disable the windows key in the keyboard by just pressing FN plus the windows key although it does make the key have a white color to it. This white color also happens on the lock buttons when activated such as the caps lock, scroll lock and num lock. This white lighting serves as an indicator when the lock is active. Now let's talk about the RGB on this thing. The side lamp is really really fun to look at. The animation is really smooth and the RGB just really shines through that plastic. Even just look at the back makes me feel satisfied. Although it's been pointed out in TechSource that there are hotspots when left on a static color, but personally, I don't seem to mind this or notice it a lot. The backlight RGB is also very satisfying to look at. Putting putting keycaps on this. Putting putting keycaps. <laughs> putting putting keycaps. Putting putting keycaps. Putting putting keycaps on these would also make it very satisfying but one thing I learned is that the RGB won't flex that much on the board when you put putting keycaps. So to summarize, let's go with the pros and cons of this thing. For the pros, it has great RGB lighting and modes, durable build quality, goes great with putting keycaps, useful media keys, great customizability, anti-ghosting, and a pretty alright software. For the cons, it has noticeable flexing, APS keycaps with a meh font, it's non-hot swappable, and the side lamp has hot spots when left on static mode. Overall, it's a pretty nice keyboard to have, especially if you're a unicorn vomit addict like me. Is it the best keyboard out there? No. <laughs> it's most likely that there are way better keyboards out there. Is it the most RGB keyboard out there? Still no. There is the Womir K87 where the keyboard is basically just a touchable RGB at this point and it's even a hot swappable. But since the Womir doesn't have adjustable feet and the lack of numpads and the only color it has is white, the RK918 is literally the closest thing to a unicorn vomit I can get. Plus the RK918 has a software so there's that. 
So that's my little review of the Royal Clutch RK918. I know it's different than the usual gaming videos, although I still hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. And I've actually been trying to make this video since November of last year. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys could, I don't know, leave a like, subscribe, comment, I don't know, you do your thing. And yeah, bye.